Good morning, everybody. It is so good to be here with you this morning. It is great to be here. So I invite you all to stand as you are able, and we will begin our service with our hymn, 529. God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. <laughs> A reading from Isaiah. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoked me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, 
who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay them into their laps, their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritance, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Be not far away, O Lord, you are my strength, hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall bow before him. For the kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now, before faith came, we were in prison and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. <coughs> There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not help torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city in, and the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm getting back on my two steps. I'm getting back. I'm getting back. Here we go. <laughs> so we hear this story of, the, of this encounter between Jesus and a possessed man. And so Jesus has come from his territory, from his people, goes to the other side, gets in a boat and goes on the other side of the river. And on the other side of the river is the community primarily made up of people who are not Jews, people who are not part of the Israelite community. They have their own rules. They have their own ways of living. It's a different culture, a different way of life. But he comes in and he encounters a person who is broken, a person who is possessed. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say how long. It just says that the man has been separated from the community, isolated, marginalized, set apart. And in this encounter, 
Jesus liberates him. There is a huge transformation because the next time we hear about this man, the man who had been naked, who had been completely out of his mind, is now, it says, at the feet of Jesus, fully clothed and in their right mind. Word goes out, the community comes back out into the, into the margins to see what's happened, and they find him. They find him there. And their response and their reaction is to say, we don't know about this power, we don't understand it. It seemed to do something good, but let me tell you, we don't want it. Go away. And often, I have thought a lot about the man and the encounter between the man and, the, and Jesus and that transformative power that Jesus has to heal. And I think that is important not to lose sight of that. But what I want to focus on today is the reaction between the community to the event and to this transformative power of Jesus. So the first thing is amazement. They can't believe that a man so broken, so out of his personhood, can possibly be healed. Because the response from the community had been to shackle him, set him apart, put him away, separate him, keep him from others. And instead now, this person is completely healed, dressed in the right mind. So they're can't believe that this has even happened. But then the second thing that happens is that they are very, very afraid. And they are so afraid that they cannot see what has happened before them. They cannot see that the good news that this person has received, this power, healing power of Jesus that can transform somebody who is so far out, they couldn't see that maybe, just maybe, this power could also be for them. Because I am sure that just like any community, there were other problems in their community. There were other broken people, maybe obviously not to this degree, but there were other people who could have benefited from the healing of Jesus. And instead of saying, oh, if you could do that, why don't you come on in, stay with us, help us, because let me tell you, we can line them up for you. And I'm the first one to go, right? No. They say, go back to from where you came from. We don't want your kind around here. We don't want this power in our community. Because you see, things had already been shaken up. One of the results of this transformative power and this demon leaving this person is that now their, their, their swine, their pigs, are gone. That means their livelihood, their economic system, has been turned upside down. There was a cost to this person getting healed. So what else is going to cost them, right? What else is going to be turned upside down? Who else is going to be revealed that needs some healing that had been hiding it really nicely and hadn't told people that they also needed to be healed, right? So that's the encounter. That's what's happened in this, in this story that we just read. And I just don't think it's too far from what we experience today. We are celebrating today Juneteenth. And for those of you who, like me, are new to this, it is a holiday that just last year became a national holiday, and it celebrates the announcement of the emancipation, the freedom of former slaves in Galveston. Now, you think war's over? 
winners, losers, we've got it all together. The people who have been enslaved are now free, moving on, right? Good news, good news. Jesus is broken in, and we now can think about how we can incorporate these people that we had seen as far away, as not part of us, but Jesus is broken in, we're gonna bring him incorporate. But that's not what happened in Galveston. It's probably not what happened in all places. We just know about this one in particular because it was so egregious. Two years. They had been freed for two years and they were still being treated as slaves. They were still considered slaves. So they were acting as slaves and the people were treating them as slaves for two years. And so the good news comes and then they are told that they are free. So that is what we're celebrating today. But why did it take so long for them to hear the good news? Why did it take so long for them to start beginning to be reincorporated into their community fully with full benefits and full rights? And I would offer that's partly because they, the people that were there, were afraid of what else is going to change in their world, just like the community in the garrison scene that we just heard. What else was going to change for them? The power dynamics were being shifted. The economic systems were being turned upside down. For years, they had had free labor. Now they were actually going to have to pay for it. So all of these events, any time some, we have seen communities respond just like that Garrison community, when something new comes in, Jesus breaks in and says, let me heal, let me transform, let me change. Sometimes, sometimes, more often than not, unfortunately, our response is we are afraid. And so we say, no, thank you, Jesus. Go back to that other side. Go help somebody else. We don't want that type of stuff here. It's too painful. It's too hard. It's too disrupting. It may not be right. It may not be good, but we know it. We understand it. We know who's who. We know who's not. We know who are put for how to keep people in their place. I know what place I belong in. Let's just keep it that. That's the simple nodding. It's not something that's so great about us sometimes, but that is what we are reminded. And so today I ask, where are some places where we have seen people transform and that we are not able to see the gift? We are not able to see the transformation and we are not able to say, oh, I want some of that, but instead respond with fear. Now think about people with addiction or people who have been incarcerated, and when they come back, are we able to see them as healed people? Are we able to see them as people of their right mind and willing and caringly, lovingly wanting them to come back into full society? Or do we make it really difficult because we just don't think that they have, that they're still worthy of our community? There's a man named Henry that I met probably four years or five years ago. And I met him, he stands in the corner of South, of South First on the, and Cesar Chavez, right across from City Hall. You know that corner, right? And I take that road to get onto Mopac. And so, one time I rolled the window and said, oh, you know, we started talking and his name is Henry and he had just gotten out of jail. He says, what I need is a job. I just need a job. Because then I can get my feet back up and then I can find a place to live and then I can move on. Unfortunately, Henry is still at that corner and I still see him seven years later. And every time that I come by, he gets, he looks less hopeful, he looks less encouraged, and despair is setting in. 
Now, he has done his share. He has been released. He is now free. And yet the community is not willing to see Henry as a person in his right mind, fully clothed at the feet of Jesus. Because it is too scary to see people who we have put away, marginalized, separated, to be able to come back into full community. We have people talking right now about civil rights, re re connect, re reminding us that civil rights are still not where they need to be. And there, there's their movement and there's call for everybody to have access to voting, particularly people of color. And we're being reminded of people who've been marginalized and separated and abused. And there's these movements, Black Lives Matter, women's rights, all of these movements coming about. And the question is, do we say yes? How do we figure this out? How do we incorporate it? Or do we just say, you know what? Maybe it ain't right. Maybe it's not too, not all the way it needs to be, but we know it. We know how it works. 10% of the voters is just fine with us. That's how it's been done. And we don't want what, what happens if more people vote, who will be elected? What kind of people will be running the show? We, we like knowing who's in charge. But here's the thing, Jesus came to break away, break away those who were bound and enslaved and reminding every single one of us that we are one people, one body. And not to say these are in and these are out and who's in charge and who's on the bottom, who gets to vote, who doesn't get to vote, who's worthy, who's not worthy. St. Paul reminds the community, no longer, no longer Jew, no longer Greek, no longer Democrat, no longer Republican, no longer slave, no longer free, no longer black, no longer white. Say what you were going to say. No longer male or female. No longer male or female no longer straight or queer, right? All of us. No longer God or the devil. No longer God or the devil. Well, we could talk about that later. We can talk about that later because let me just tell you, it's all good. let me just tell you, it is, we are, that is what we're trying to remind ourselves of who do we belong to? Who do we say we follow? And if we say we follow Christ, if we say that we are one in Christ, then we've got to live it. And it's not, I've said it over and over and over here, it is not easy. But that is what we are called to do, to not see division, to not see less than, to not see more and better. Lay clergy, we are disciples. We are called to be disciples, to bring about Christ into this world. Be yourself. And so, that, and so that is what we are called to be, to be Christ-like, so that then others can see Christ. And, and be able then, all of us, to live into that promise that Christ made for us. This life of abundance, this life of peace, this life of love that we are all invited into. But it requires all of us to, when we see transformation in others, when we see transformation in us, when we see transformation in our communities, to rejoice and to be excited and to ask for more of it and not to turn it away. Amen. 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 I invite all of you to stand as you are able as we reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, who came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, who came down from heaven, was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry on your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good. Inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil. Unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, Hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care. For the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice. Hear our prayers for the earth. God of peace. We pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family. For refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all who are in need. God of grace, we pray for those who have died for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. 
Make us faithful to your, to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace. Hear our prayers for those who have died. Be warned, we have a lot to pray for today, a lot to pray for. Let us begin by saying, reminding those people on Zoom that I have the chat in front of me, and uh, I invite you to uh, lift up your prayers, and I will say them aloud. So just write them in the chat, and we'll include your prayers. We begin by praying for healing and guidance, especially for Manuel, Hilda Lisbeth, Rebecca, Angel, Jaime, Jessica, Adam, Anne, Jean, Kay, Frank, Scott, Marianne, Terry, Cindy, Michael, Wen and Wendy and their family, Josie, Ramona, and CJ. We also pray for the people, the victims, and their families of the school in Uvalde. God, our Father, whose beloved Son took children into his arms and blessed them. Give us grace to entrust your beloved children of Uvalde to your everlasting care and love. Bring them fully into your heavenly kingdom. Pour out your grace and loving kindness on all who grieve. Surround them with your love and restore their trust in your goodness. We lift up to you our weary and wounded souls and ask you to send your Holy Spirit to take away the anger and violence that infects our hearts and make us instruments of your peace and children of the light. In the name of Christ, who is our hope, we pray. We also share this prayer, extend this prayer to the people of St. Stephen's Church in Birmingham, Alabama, who I think Thursday or Friday, they were having a boomer's potluck and one of their own came in, or one associated with them, came in and shot and killed three people. Lord, we ask for safety in all of our places of worship, education, markets, shops, wherever we may go. We also pray for Ukraine, God of peace and justice. We pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war and peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. We pray for all our loved ones who have died, especially Sister Emily Louise, Pam, Don, and Tiffany. And we give thanks for the wedding of Carla and Hector. We also give thanks for the birthdays of Paulina, Keith, Annette, 
Carla and all Alphonse. More thanksgivings for those celebrating wedding, wedding anniversaries, especially Mary and John, Kay and Wayne, and Lori and John. Choir is having a lot of wedding anniversaries today. We also want to give thanks for parents, especially fathers on this Father's Day. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, you have blessed fathers with the joy and care of children. Give them calm strength and patient wisdom as they bring up these beautiful children, that they may teach the children to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Are there any other prayers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Traveling mercies and safety as you travel to uh, for the Daughters of the King Triennial. That's exciting. Do we want to do the, um, back, do people who are celebrating weddings, uh, would uh, Harry and Kay want to come up? We could do a special blessing. I guess they're feeling a little. Shy. I don't know. <laughs> we'll do John and Lori uh, next week when they're when John is back. I invite all of you to join me on the to pray for them. Page four thirty one of your BCP. It's that red book with a cross in the front. We'll pray together. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessings upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, and their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with this favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Well, we have one final blessing for the, for the day, and that is uh, our dear sister, Faye Jones. Come on up. As we have mentioned before, um, Faye Jones has served this community faithful for over 10 years. 14, if I'm not mistaken. 13. Almost 14, but almost, thir almost 14, but 13 plus. And she has served this community way before I came here. She has served this community before some of you were here. But those of you who have been working with her since you've known her know that she has dedicated her time, her energy, her passion, her creativity to this community. And she's a member. And so she will continue to be a member. So we are not going to say goodbye to Faye. But we do want to recognize the work she has done here for this community. She's served many hats. I invite all of you to come uh, after the services to uh, for a little uh, celebration there, but we wanted to use this time our, during our service to offer a prayer and a blessing. Gracious God, we thank you for Faye. We thank you for her love to the church. We thank you for her love for the people in the community of St. John's and beyond. You know all that she has done. You know all the people she has touched. And those of us who have been touched by her know of this love and grace that she has bestowed upon us. We ask you to guide her and as she leads into her next phase in life 
and that retirement, that may, retirement life may be all that she asks for and more. And we ask you to bless her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be with her and remain with her always. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements? The peace of the Lord be always with you. I misspoke. It wasn't announcements we just finished. It was blessings and prayers. Please sit down because, oh, we have announcements. Announcements will be said. All right. We, Ms. Sandra, take it away. But I need you to come either to these two spots because we will get, uh, we will not be able to connect with people. Or you can come to the, for fan drive. No, no, no. I'm telling you. You would know, Miss Zoom, Zoom person knows that we cannot Zoom our announcements if we're not from these two spaces. Gosh. <laughs> and drive is that time is past that time actually so about $25 I think the fans are running right now so if you will please give to the fan drive it's fans for seniors and for paws for the doggies and it's running through July so if you write a check $25 and put fan drive in the uh, description we'd appreciate it and I forgot how much we raised last year, but quite a bit for this size of church. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, but $900. Yep. Last year, we think, we think it was like $900 last year. Yes, Mike. Yes, we get t-shirts this year. When Christy and I come back from Baltimore. It's all about the t-shirts, right? I mean, you know, so let's, 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 uh, it's a win-win for everybody. I'll have t-shirts the Sunday when we come back. Okay. Deacon Victoria, Thank if you, you could talk about um, our Juneteenth events. Um, I'm going to try to do it fast because, man, we're going late here, but uh just for those of you know, if you haven't seen John Williams' Facebook thing, we had a great time going to the uh, Neil Cochran house and seeing the slave quarters that are, were the only slave quarters still in a building and saw very many buildings that were part of the freedom colonies, freedmen colonies, right after the Civil War, we all learned a lot. But Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we're having movie night. And we're going to watch the movie. My name is Polly Murray. And uh, she, it's based on, the movie's based on the book about her named uh, Jane Crow. So we're having a popcorn cook-off. And for those of you who cannot make it to the parish hall or to the church campus, we will be doing hybrids so that you can also participate via Zoom. You just can't get the popcorn. Thank you, both of you. I want to just I want to add a couple of more announcements. One of the things that we have begun uh, two two months ago or two weeks ago was Bible study or Christian formation, and that is in between the eight thirty service and the eleven o'clock service. I highly, highly encourage you to participate. Part of being a Christian or part of being a part of this faith community is we got to learn together. We got to study together, right? Because as I said earlier in my sermon, this stuff ain't easy. 
And so this is allows us to be able to, to study together and be able to figure out how do we put what we read and what we hear into, act, into practice. So I invite you to do that. And that is at 945 every, every Sunday. The other thing that I wanted to add is that the choir is closing their, their season, their practice season. And as they always do, they do with a flare. It's, they end it with a sim, sing hymn. So if you want to come and sing with them or hear them singing their beautiful music and partake in a potluck, please uh, join us on Thursday, this Thursday at six o'clock. And the food will be in the narthex and the singing and the playing will be here. Very excited about that. And then I want to end with this really important announcement. And that is that next Sunday, we are going to be celebrating the Feast of Polly Murray. And the Feast of Polly Murray, what we do on that Sunday, we're going to take up a special collection for the Polly Murray Scholarships. And I want to just let you know how important these are because it allows people, uh, people of color, to be able to come into seminary and have less debt. Graduate school is expensive. And so the seminary is then able to offer scholarships for people of color so that they do not have as much debt when they're, when they're done with their studies. So they can come and serve communities uh, and not be weighed, uh, weighed under by their, by their debt. So I invite you, if you're able to participate in that special connection next Sunday uh, at all of our services. That is all we have for announcements today except for, hold on, hold on, Ramona. Can you give her the mic so that way she can be heard? Please, thank you. Oh, but we, you know who won't hear you? is our Zoom friends. And we want our Zoom friends to hear everything that happens in here. Well, almost everything, you know, there's some like. <laughs> I just want to tell each and every one of you guys, thanks for your prayers for my mom on her departure. She's up there looking down at me and my dad and my baby sister. I just want to tell you all, thanks for the prayers for me as well as my health. And keep praying for me because it's getting worse and worse. But God is in control. And I thank you God for all that. And I sincerely mean that. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for being part of our community. You are loved and you're welcome. You're always really happy when you're able to come in in person. Thank you both. Brothers and sisters, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
to remind everybody that this is God's table, not our table, and all baptized Christians are welcomed at this table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice. For the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
things at them like we're going to do this new thing we're going to do this we're going to be celebrating Juneteenth and, we, and so all the month of June they've been doing some wonderful music so thank you thank you for all that you do and for making our liturgy such life-giving for all of us thank you pray eternal God heavenly father you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the parish hall, we have some fun goodies, and we'd like to celebrate and have a Sending a sending off, half sending off, only sending off to the retired person, but not a sending off to the member. <laughs>